Hey guys, so today I want to talk a little bit more about doubt, questioning, denial. Um, these are things that I've talked about in a few of my videos, several of my videos already, and the reason I like to do it is because it's one of the biggest things that holds back trans people from deciding to transition and even uh, to coming out to themselves and, and really feeling like they figure themselves out legitimately. Um, <clears throat> The idea that I wanted to talk about today was, was the feeling that a lot of trans people had, and one that I had, and that was the feeling that in order to accept the possibility that I was trans, I had to prove it to myself in some way first. Um, it's an idea that's echoed by the gatekeeping model, and it is certainly important to think long and hard about your feelings and whether or not you think you're actually a transsexual. But what standard do we hold ourselves to, and what, what does that mean? Uh, what does that mean for us? For me, it meant years of denial and, and pushing my trans feelings back into the back of my mind and repressing them because I would constantly find these questions that I didn't necessarily have great or clear answers to that would make me question whether or not I was really trans. And I mentioned some of them in some of my earlier videos, but it really gets back to a main point of what sort of criteria do we do we hold ourselves to and how stringent is that and why and why has it been constructed that way so Natalie Reed uh, who's a trans woman who runs a really really great blog and I'll link to it uh, in this in the description of this post um, I think a week or two ago she had an incredibly insightful blog post about this exact question the standards that we hold the standards of proof that we hold ourselves to when we're considering whether or not we're trans and what she talked about was that being cisgendered is treated as a null hypothesis, that it's basically seen by trans people and by uh, the medical establishment as the base assumption that everybody is, is cisgendered. And in order to be deemed trans, you need to prove that you're transgendered. But this is fundamentally flawed. Um, it creates this this really disjointed or unfair and unbalanced burden of proof for being trans. It makes us feel like we have to go above and beyond uh, to make absolutely certain or to prove absolutely certainty in extreme ways that we're actually trans and not, in fact, just messed up cis people. Um, and when we approach it through that lens, our acknowledgement of being trans is difficult to get to. Uh, and it can take us a lot longer than I think it would if maybe we approached it from a more equitable place. Um, so maybe a better way to frame it would, or a better way to frame the question of am I trans would be, is it more likely that I'm cis or is it more likely that I'm trans? Um, I think if you frame it in that way, you can you can draw the distinctions between the average behaviors of those two types of people and come to a conclusion which side you fit on better. Um, for me, when I look at it in that framework, if I were to take the average trans person and the average cis person and say, which one of these two people am I most similar to in my thoughts, my actions, my innermost feelings? It's so clearly trans people. Um, and this was something that I probably could have said a, a really long time ago because I, even when I first began uh, thinking of, thinking about or learning about trans issues, I knew that I identified with trans people more than I did with cisgendered people. Um, but still I had this feeling in my mind that I had to do all these other things in order to prove to myself and eventually to everybody else that I was transgendered. Uh, I think that's the wrong way to go about it. I think it's better to, to really put it on a more equal playing field and consider, do I feel like I, I match more with cisgender people or do I feel like I match more with transgender people or, or somewhere in between? Um, I definitely didn't do a good, a, as good of a job of explaining this idea as was done on the blog post by Natalie, but I think it gets the point across at least a little bit. So definitely read her blog post and read the rest of her blog too. It's absolutely awesome. Uh, you'll learn a lot and I know I have. So that's it for today. Thanks guys. Bye.